Butler Fasco Lactis cenarius is a slow moving arboreal marsupial endemic to Australia. It is important not only to our ecosystem, but is an Australian icon and part of our national identity. Representative of the Australian Outback, the koala is a quintessential draw card for international tourists, an industry worth over $1.1 billion to the Australian economy annually. So, what will we do if the koala were to disappear? Together, actually, there's two moths that only live in koala feces. So there you go. If the koalas go extinct, they go extinct, at least. Koala populations in southeast Queensland have been in decline since European settlement. Hunted almost to extinction in the 1920s, koalas are now facing a new range of pressures as a result of human activity. We're saying there may be as few as 43,000 koalas left, maybe 80,000, compared to maybe 10 million koalas at white settlement. So there's been a huge loss of genetic diversity and I think most people can understand that can't be good for the future of the koalas. Southeast Queensland is recognised as having the highest density of koalas in the state, however is also experiencing rapid human population growth. A study by the University of Queensland Centre for Population Research has estimated that between 2001 and 2021, the region's population will increase by 1.2 million. An additional 50,800 hectares of land will be required to accommodate this new growth. A conservative estimate is that 30,000 to 35,000 hectares of land will be natural vegetation. If destruction of habitat exceeds critical threshold levels, leaving less than 30% of the original habitat, koala populations will potentially collapse. And ultimately in population biology, there is one fundamental law that's always true. If there's more habitat, the extinction probability is lower. Less habitat, the extinction probability goes up. So ultimately, the, the amount of habitat is probably the single most driving feature in terms of whether koalas will persist in an area. So you need lots of high quality habitat and when I say lots, we now believe that generally if a population doesn't have a few thousand individuals, then in the very long term it's likely to disappear. So a few thousand, when you're talking about koalas, we're talking about areas of 20, 50,000 hectares as a minimum size. There is little evidence for genetic exchange between coastal and inland populations and three distinct subspecies can be recognised. Patches of habitat become isolated from other patches, so the um, features of connectivity uh, between uh, resources within an area get fractured. fractured. And so, uh, what really happens for koalas is they then have to travel across sort of non habitat to get from one patch to another, and that's when they come in contact with cars and dogs and things and get in trouble. The situation is exacerbated by koalas' high degree of specialisation favouring a specific species of eucalypts. Populations tend to be concentrated in certain favourable sites. Even in separate, intact populations, koalas remain at high risk of other human-derived threats. Motor vehicles associated with human populations are responsible on average for 361 injured koalas a year, 85% resulting in fatality. Queensland government policy requires that new development in areas be assessed to have minimised traffic in areas known to have active koala populations and ensure safe crossing sites. The Queensland government estimates that the family dog is responsible for the death of 300 koalas each year in Queensland alone. Generally occurring in urban areas and rural holdings, domestic dog attacks often occur when a koala crosses into a dog's territory. The combined pressure of these human-derived threats may make koalas more susceptible to disease, furthering their vulnerability. The chlamydia pathogen is present in most healthy koalas and tends to manifest itself when a koala becomes stressed. The koala has poor potential for recovery under pressure. This is due to its nature as an equilibrial species. The life history strategy of the koala involves iteroparous reproduction. A healthy female is able to produce one joey a year for up to 12 years. While a relatively large parental investment in offspring increases an individual's chance of reaching maturity, it means the species does not adapt well to disturbance. 
So where does the future for koala populations in southeast Queensland lie? If present trends continue, what impact will this have on the continued persistence of this iconic species? Uh, if they koalas all disappeared, what would happen to the forest? That's, a, that's another typical question to answer. I mean, it's hard to know exactly what would happen to the ecosystem. And of course, in some parts of Australia, all the koalas have disappeared. And so the question is, how much impact has that had on the forest? And I don't think anybody has any idea.